During the planning of a recent video, I needed to install a Python application. This application was not in the Arch repos and was not in the AUR. So I did what I always do. I pulled out pip and went to install it. But to my surprise, I got an error message. Not an error message I'm complaining about though. One that probably should have existed years ago and has been around for quite a while, but Arch Linux is kind of late to the game here with distros like Debian 12 adopting this all the way back in February. And when Debian adopts something, eventually it propagates out to all of the Debian based distros. One of those distros being Ubuntu. They decided to adopt it in 23.04. And when that happened, well, this led to a lot of really confused users. Pip error on Ubuntu, externally managed environment. This environment is externally managed. If you ever wonder whether a lot of Linux users just ask for support without even remotely reading the error message, this is a really good example of that being the case, because this error message tells you exactly what you need to do. So what exactly is happening here? Well, this goes all the way back to 2021 with PEP 668, a Python enhancement proposal, marking Python based environments as externally managed. Like many of the proposals directly affecting Linux, some of the people involved in proposing it are from both Ubuntu and also Debian. Now, basically what this is, is on Linux, we have these really useful things called package managers. They're great for resolving dependency issues and being a single point of access for installing applications. Now, when you just have Pacman, apt, DNF, or anything else as the only thing managing a package, they work generally really well. The problem is when you introduce things outside of that. In the Arch repos, and probably every other repo out there, there are going to be applications with Python library dependencies, some of them being required, some of them being optional, one such case being Ranger. This has dependencies like Python Shardet and Python Pillow. Now, this is in the Arch Linux repos, so I would go and install this using Pacman. Now, what if I go and install another application not with Pacman, but instead with pip. But this application also makes use of some of these dependencies, but not the same versions. So pip is gonna try to update those packages to a newer version. All of a sudden, you are messing with files being managed with a different package manager. So now two package managers are conflicting over the same files. This is probably temporarily fine. Assuming there wasn't a massive update that massively changes the library's API, the applications you have installed are probably going to keep working. The real problem is what happens next. Say you try to do a system update using Pacman. All of a sudden, the files that Pacman expects to be there are no longer going to be there. And this is gonna require some manual intervention overriding the files that were changed by pip. A much bigger problem is removing a package with one of these package managers. If this goes and removes one of the libraries an application in the other package manager requires, that package manager is gonna have no idea that file is missing, but the application from the other package manager is no longer going to work let alone what happens if you try to do a system-wide upgrade using pip. This is going to try to update every Python library on your system, many of which are being managed by your other package manager. This is going to cause tons and tons of manual intervention. What this change does is basically stops that. It says that any packages that are installed globally are not managed by pip. Instead, they are externally managed, in this case by the distro, and pip is not allowed to touch them, at least by default. This feature is not something forced by Python or forced by pip, it is entirely optional for distros to include, and thankfully, Arch Linux now does. I thought this feature had basically just been added, but then I realized I wasn't using pip for a while, was I? This was actually added about a month ago. Now for history and what it does, all of that stuff is great. But at the end of the day, I still want to install this package and the error message is not letting me do so. So there are some ways to get around this. Now the first couple I'm going to say, I do not recommend doing. I am just saying them for completeness. So 
the first thing you can do is pass in dash dash break dash system dash packages. Now, as the name would suggest, you're going to probably break something. This is going to use the old behavior where pip can just overwrite anything it wants to overwrite. This is a really bad idea and you shouldn't do it. Now, another option is you can just get rid of the file providing this behavior. If we go to user lib python 3.11, and then in here, there is going to be a file called externally managed. You can go and delete this file and the problem will never show itself again. Once again, this is not a good solution. I've just seen people suggesting it online. This will just disable the behavior and go back to the old behavior. The proper thing you should be doing is using Python virtual environments. Basically a little environment where pip will only install applications and dependencies into that environment. This will keep them separate from the rest of your system. This is a common tactic used for a development environment. So the first thing we need to do is make a new directory. I'm going to call mine textual paint, call it whatever application you're trying to install. Then what we need to do is run python -m v -emp for virtual environment and then the path to the virtual environment. This is going to make an environment in just a moment. There we go. If we go into that folder now, we'll see there is a bunch of random files in here. We have pip, we have python, and all of the stuff we need for having python actually working properly. What we can do now is use the virtual environment version of pip. So that's going to be inside of that folder in slash bin and then pip. If we do install and textual dash paint, now it is going to install perfectly fine. And there we go. But that is a mess and I don't want to do it. The much better solution is using something like pip x. This on most distros is going to be in a package called something like python dash pip x. This is going to automate the process of making your virtual environments so you just don't have to think about it. Now what we can do is pip x install textual dash paint. It's going to install it and we just don't need to think about it. There we go, it's done. If I go and run textual dash paint, now it works. Running an application like that isn't something that just magically happens with a virtual environment. Pipex will also make a sim link from the virtual environment to dot local slash bin. So we can just run the application like any other application. For our other virtual environment, we would need to go textual dash paint bin and then textual dash paint or we can go and make the sim link ourselves, but why would we go and do that when we can just go and automate the process with Pipex? This feature was under discussion for Arch all the way back in May, but it's not really fair to call it much of a discussion. It's more like, hey guys, Debian is doing this. It's a pretty good idea. So like, why don't we do it? And that's pretty much how the discussion went until basically out of nowhere, Felix Jan came in and said, this version of Python implemented it, so yeah, we've just done it now. It's enabled. Have fun. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a saint here, and I've been using virtual environments the entire time. I wasn't. I was installing applications directly with pip, installing them globally, and then dealing with issues as they happen. But now that I've been taught the way, the way of the virtual environment, it is so much better. I don't know why I was ever doing the other way before. Pipex is just so much more convenient and I'm not going to break my system. And that's always a good thing. So if you're not using virtual environments, I highly recommend you do so. But if you really don't want to, there are some workarounds where you can just fully disable the externally managed thing. I just don't recommend you do so. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you ever notice this change coming in? Have you been using virtual environments the entire time? Or did you see the error and then just not read it and were really confused what was happening? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And what if I told you my environment was virtual? <laughs>